What's up, everybody? Brian Wilson here for some martial arts. I'm going to tell you um, a couple of stories about uh, getting trained with Hicks and Gracie this uh, past July in Las Vegas. So, um, very first of July, uh, we're in Vegas for the Martial Arts Super Show. It's a um, it's a conference that we go to a lot for martial arts school owners, and <clears throat> it's always been really beneficial on just giving you um, cool ideas and things to take back with you so you can get your gym right a little smoother and focus more on your students. It's how I've always uh, taken it. It's like the best process, better process that I come up with uh, to sort of run my gym, the better, um, the better things are on the floor and the more time I get to spend with my students and uh, training competitors and things of that nature. Uh, we're, we're sort of a um, mid-sized academy. We're a big academy for where we're at. We're located in Russellville, Arkansas. Um, but we, uh, we do a lot of cross training, we travel a lot, we compete a lot. Um, about um, a little less than 250 students here at the school. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of them do jiu-jitsu, a lot of kickboxers, some people do MMA. So <clears throat> that's kind of the context. But this uh, conference that we go to, it's martial artists from all disciplines. They don't just do boxing, kickboxing, judo, jiu-jitsu, MMA like we do. They might do taekwondo or karate or kung fu or anything. It's just like everybody that owns a martial arts school is sort of invited and, and welcome and encouraged to come. So <clears throat> um, we're there. Uh, I get word that there's going to be this Hicks and Gracie Experience Seminar. So I first um, heard about Hickson through watching Choke uh, with my buddy Mike Page, Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt, uh, owner of Inferno Martial Arts. And uh, he, uh, Mike also took um, third at Worlds this year. So uh, congrats to Mike. Uh, but Mike turned me on to Hicks and Gracie when I was a white belt. Uh, just kind of introduced me to the documentary Choke. And it was like I just remember sitting on his couch watching it and how big of an impact it made and how influential it was on me. Like I knew at that point that I was, was not going to stop doing jiu-jitsu. Like I saw... I felt like I saw another level. I, I saw the art um, more than ever when I saw that documentary. So if you haven't seen Choke, it came out in like 94, 95. It's like an hour and 20 minutes. At one point, it's one of the most popular documentaries on YouTube. So that's how I came to know who Hickson was. We'll see, he's off the grid for a while. Um, and he's, he's been back in the United States for, I think, two or three years now. And um, so when I got word that there's going to be a seminar, um, I was super happy and uh, booked a, a pass to, or ticket or whatever you want to call it for my wife and I like pretty much immediately. And we get there to the seminar, my friend Jack Topper's there, another friend Kayla Plank, another, one of the owners of Inferno Martial Arts Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt. We're all there and um, <clears throat> Hickson starts off, he's showing some stand-up. And um, the stand-up he was showing was so great. A lot of a lot of what I took away stand up wise from training with Hickson was what I would call like obscure judo. Judo throws that you don't really see a lot of jiu jitsu or judo people doing anymore because in judo they've uh, do the stylization of the sports becoming legal to do certain types of throws like grabbing the legs, like a throw called Sukanagi. That's a throw that um that I've learned from uh, the Hickson seminars and Jack. So I got to do two uh, Hickson seminars, like back to back, day one, day two. Okay, so um, it was uh, the next day was for all the people at the at the super show. So like all the traditional martial artists and everyone. It was an hour, and the one we went to was three hours. Two hundred people, tons of people in the room. So we started off doing the stand up, and story one that kind of blew me away was. Hickson had a guy come out and he's like, hey, you know, stop me from touching your face. Okay? So this guy, and this black belt, I don't know his name, but he has a crazy mustache and it's awesome. He's one of Alan Belcher's guys. I've seen him around a lot. He goes to the Super Show a few years that I've been there and I see him on, like, I think we might even be friends on Facebook. Or I just see him on Alan's page. You know, friends with Alan on Facebook. I see this guy. This is a signature mustache. So he calls him out and a whole bunch of other black belts, not to put that dude on the spot, throw him on front street, but he calls out a bunch of black belts. Nobody can touch Hicks, uh, stop Hickson from touching them on the forehead. Just bump, bump. And then, adversely so, no one can touch Hickson's forehead. 
So he has this sort of model where he does his hands like this. You guys might see Nick and Nate Diaz do that in fights they do, and in boxing it's called a wedge. But uh, I think um, the way he does it is truly unique. It spins off of a, th a lot of things I've seen where you spin in, grab somebody's sleeve and spin in. Just a superior way of underhooking someone, getting in for a hip throw. So he, he kind of used that as a precursor for when people got close and were going to grab, he would fight his elbows on their hands and parry and get over and step in for an underhook instead of hand fighting, hand on hand, when standing while someone's closing distance. So get, seeing him call those guys out there, be like, hey, saw me for touching your face, they couldn't, and hey, touch my face, and they couldn't, that was awesome. I was um, immediately hooked in. And um, he just showed a lot of cool stand-up. He showed a way to defend an Osoto, uh, which is an outside leg throw. If you don't do judo, Osoto Gari, out, a major outer reap, a large outer reap, however you want to interpret it. And um, showed some Sayanagi details, the shoulder throws, showed some hip throw details, body locking details. Um, and it was it was all, I've done judo, I have my shoda on, my, my um, first degree black belt in judo. And I've never seen this level of stand-up. Everything is about this concept of hip connection. Whether he's trying to take you down or you're trying to take them down. It was all about hip connection to maintain posture. So that changed my whole game. How I do things, uh, I actually tested for my showdown shortly after that and I, it was like filled so many holes in my game defensively. I tell people all the time there's this concept in judo called jigata. In a seminar in Memphis, I learned that from Jack, who told me he learned it from Ixon, Jack Toffer. We just had him in for a seminar. He was on my podcast. So um, <laughs> that was one story, the face touch story. Another crazy um, thing was at that seminar, um, he taught some guard. Uh, you can see him teaching some of that same stuff on the Jiu-Jitsu Times video. And um, some of the same stand-up he just taught, and I did a podcast review on the Tokyo seminar. He did a Hicks and Gracie Cup in Tokyo. And then that was the Hicks and Gracie Cup in Albany where um, he taught some of the same guard stuff. You can go watch that. We're living in a time where Hicks and Gracie is putting information out. He has the self-defense unit coming out, a series. Uh, everybody pretty much universally accepts that Hickson's the, the greatest of all time in jiu-jitsu. When people argue about things he says, he's big on self-defense, but... I mean, he's, uh, he's not, I don't think that he's anti-sport. I think he's anti the direction sport is going. Like, like I mentioned with the judo throws, the stylization of that art has taken a lot of throws and a lot of the tradition off the table in the sport. So I think the, the enthusiasts of the art see that in a negative light, and I kind of do too, honestly. It's like I'm a proponent of being able to do pretty much all techniques and, you know, if you wanted to say jiu-jitsu sport is no fouls, no striking, fouls are your common fouls, hands in the eyes, fish hooking, punching, whatever. Make a really limited list of fouls and <clears throat> let them go after it. Adult black belts can't do all subs in, in any tournament. And I don't understand that. And I think that a lot of people don't understand that, that even that aren't uh, into self-defense, that are sport enthusiasts themselves. That's why you see so much of the no gi movement and the sub only movement that we're kind of in the midst of or on the tail end of right now I, some people think that it's kind of going to fa uh, phase out i think it's going to stay strong but we'll just we'll have to see i think that reforms in the sport need to happen and i think if that it just becomes an olympic sport it's probably going to get worse it's probably going to get more stylized so <clears throat> some things to think about the story too is hickson shows some escapes so he calls out this Brazilian guy named Rodrigo. Rodrigo, you're a great champion. Come on. And so he gets Rodrigo out there. Rodrigo's a black belt. And Rodrigo looks like a savage. I would not. I'm, I'm just like, dude. You know, he's a scary looking Brazilian dude that would probably choke me three ways Sunday. Like, just yoked, jacked, just. I mean, just a big dude. And, like, I mean, the guy had to be, like, 205 minimum and just stacked. So he was a specimen. I was just like, yeah, this dude has to be a champion. 
So he's like, Rodrigo, you know, you're a good champion. I want you to um, stop me from escaping Mount. So Rodrigo gets on Hickson and Mount. And I just recently did a video over this detail. It's called Full Mount. Uh, I think it's called uh, Mount Escape Detail or Full Mount Escape Detail. It's on our YouTube channel where this vlog is also at. And he just pushes his center and then he hip escapes. Jack talked about it when he came in and I, I've, I've really kind of picked up on it. We've been doing it a lot in classes and I thought I'd share this story on the vlog. So you connect your hand and then hip out. And a lot of people, and this Rodrigo guy included, do this as a singular thing. So I just to tell people, it's like order operations. You connect, stiff arm, and then hip escape. A lot of people are, you know, some people call it a frame. A lot of people frame hip escape. Frame hip escape. It's like a simultaneous action. I'm of the thought, after seeing this technique and drilling this technique and teaching it to my kids, and they can already do it, that if you stiff arm right in their center frame, push them to the back corner, get one of their knees light, and then hip escape, you're going to be winning, okay? So the story goes further. So he makes Rodrigo sit down on his butt. Sorry to throw you on front street, Rodrigo, front street. But um, it wouldn't matter who it was. The way he did that technique was special. And this dude who didn't, would I'm sure have loved to, you know, stop Hickson's mount escape, couldn't do it. Black belt... Brazilian guy, champion, can't do it. Unstoppable. Hickson sits him on his butt. Part of the problem, Rodrigo and a lot of people sit down on mount. So one thing Jack said, Hickson says, and there's a video clip out there on Pedro Sauer's page where he's um, saying to a guy, it's just a clip. So Hickson has this idea called the perfect mount. And um, <clears throat> it's a clip where he says, hey, don't sit on me, don't sit on me, don't sit on me. And Jack said, Hickson, I uh, told him, he's like, hey, I'm not a couch. Don't sit on me. So the way those guys, Hicks and Jack, I've seen Henry Aiken show a video on this, do the mount is different, right? And I don't, we don't, I don't, I don't have a video out other than just so I can tell you go watch that. It's from the Hicks and Grace Cup in Albany. It's on Pedro Sauer's page, but um, they do mount in a certain way where you're not sitting a lot of hip weight down on them. So since if you are sitting hip weight down on them, this this is a perfect time to do this escape. I'm telling you, Todd. So inversely so, Hickson um, gets up on top of Rodrigo. Okay, man, I want you to do your escape. Hickson does his perfect mount. Rodrigo can't escape. Hickson's like 58 years old with rumor has it, eight ruptured disc in his back. He taught some the most amazing seminars I've ever been to in all jiu -Jitsu. I've been talking about on my podcast how you spend a short amount of time with some people and they have a big, big influence on you, right? Maybe more of an influence than some people you spend a lot of time with. You just, I can't just uh, say enough positive things about that seminar, but I left there and I put all of the jujitsu that I ever learned into a different context. I looked at things differently. I looked at posture differently. And I was running this through a context of having been fortunate enough to train with Jack Toffer probably uh, half a dozen seminars, I think six seminars, and then a couple of private lessons and trips to his house in California and countless conversations and got to go to the Hickson seminar together. And Jack's done privates with Hickson. He's trained with him extensively. So it was just um, <clears throat> all of that together because Jack's told me that he only teaches things that he learned from Hickson. A couple of days before Jack uh, came out to do a seminar with us, he had um, just had lunch with Hickson a couple weeks before that he'd done a private with him and shared some of that stuff with us and that wellspring of information is just it's unique it's different it, it's unlike anything I've ever seen or felt what uh, is is confusing to some people I think that haven't been in the room and done this seminar and still still you could go do the seminar and not walk away with things I walked away with. I was running it through the judo lens. I was running it through all of my last 11 years, uh, 10 and a half years of training at the time. Um, all the seminars, private lessons, everything that had brought me to that point as a school owner, as a competitor, it just, it made me look at all of that in a different way. It's truly a life-changing experience. 
and we got to seminar within the next day, and it was kind of a, it was an hour long instead of three. Uh, so, <clears throat> but that was, uh, it was quite amazing. I can't, uh, I can't say enough positive things about the experience, like I said, but um, just a couple of cool stories that really stick out is just like the touch my face and um, the Rodrigo stop me from escaping your mouth. Uh, but I mean, Hickson's back is jacked up several times in the seminar. He had to like bend over and like to take the pressure off of his spine. I'm sure he's like uh, a ruptured disc is what the story is. But still, I've never seen a, such a display of technique. Uh, but they call they call it invisible jujitsu and this concept of the middle and you, it, even the trained eye, things that like a body lock that I've seen and done countless times. And they're done differently by these people. And it's all based on posture, distribution of weight. But it, the, the hip connection, defensive, the defensive posture, it's all very special. It's, it's all something that I feel like has been lost in a lot of what we do. Even in judo, like I always teach people to break fall. And I would never teach them to not get thrown. And that's just not beginners. It's, the one, it's not anything we focused on a, a high degree of the time. And now it's something I teach all people. And I would just say that Hickson's Jiu-Jitsu is a Jiu-Jitsu for all people. And that's a point of contention for some people. But um, I just, you know, it, it, it's a great style for MMA. It's great for self-defense. And I have no, um, no doubt that everything he showed works in, in the sport, right? Every martial artist is different. Every individual is different. And I think that the principles that those, um, that school of people, Jack Toffer, Henry Aikens, Hicks, and everything I've seen from those guys, Dave Kama, is it's a different wellspring. It's a different set of details. And uh, it's a different way of thinking and doing about things. It's different concepts. And I am uh, I'm a big fan, obviously. Uh, so if you didn't already listen to our vlog on uh, what it's like, I got some stories from training with Jack Toffer when he was in and just collectively. So uh, great experiences there. Nothing but good things to say about Jack. If you get a chance to go to a seminar with Hickson or Jack, I strongly encourage you to do so. Um, and uh, go into it and uh, think about some of these things. And go into it with an open mind. I think it's easy to go in there and um, be overwhelmed. Fortunately, like I said, there's a lot of good resources out there where you can start to pick up on this style of jiu-jitsu. It's a unique flavor. It's different. Okay? So uh, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you share this video if you don't mind. And uh, so if you subscribe, you'll get updates. We're going to be doing weekly vlogs. We've been uploading a lot of technique videos for our students and everyone else. But thank you so much for watching, guys, and listening. We'll see you next time.